Hey, this is Luke with Hunter's Insulation. Just giving a little tour of our job site that we're working on today. So this is a small shed. This is one of those sheds you can buy at Home Depot, like a tough shed. And this is being converted into a, into a detached office. And uh, one of the challenges of working with something like this is that uh, is, is something like the rafters. So these rafters are ceiling joists. It's a vaulted ceiling, so they technically, I guess it would be ceiling joists. These are two by six. Um, and if the building code requires R30, um, you cannot get a, there's, there's a couple problems with having a vaulted ceiling like this if it's unvented, if you go with regular fiberglass matting. Um, first of all, you cannot get the full R value, the full R30 with the fiberglass batting in a two by six. Um, an R30 fiberglass bat is like 11 inches. Um, you know, depending on the manufacturer, it might be 10. There's some manufacturers that have a 10 inch R30 fiberglass bat. So it'd be too thick for these joists. That's problem number one. The second problem with the vaulted ceiling, this would be considered an unvented ceiling assembly. There's no vents at, you know, at the top, there's no vents at, at, the, uh, at the eaves. And what can happen is, is if you're heating this room, like in this particular case, this is gonna have a mini split here. So what can happen is, is on a cold day, this would particularly come into play on the colder days of the year, but let's say you just went with a fiberglass bat. And this, you got this mini split, you know, pumping the hot air. And you may have the thermostat at 70, 75 degrees or what have you. Um, but the thermostat location is here. But you're going to have hot air rising and it's going to follow and it's going to accumulate at the ridge. And at the ridge of the roof, you could have it hotter than that. It could be 80, 85 degrees. And let's say you have it that warm on a day or on an, excuse me, on a night where the temperatures dip down into the 30s or the 40s. Um, now, if you just have fiberglass batting, we have a condition where we have 85 degrees inside the ceiling on the inside, and then we have like 30 or 40 degrees outside. And the problem with that is, is now we have condensation. And I personally have been on calls where um, uh, we've had customers call back, like when I was working in the roofing business, um, and the they did like a remodel and it was done improperly. They didn't use like a vapor barrier like this, like you're supposed to. Um, and they just used fiberglass batting and they thought maybe the roof was leaking because all of a sudden now there's like black mold and leaks and water coming in, um, you know, typically at the peak. And, uh, we took apart the roof. There was no, no sign of leak there. Um, and it was due to come to find out it was due to being an unvented, um, ceiling assembly. So by using this spray foam, you can get a ton of R value in a smaller space. You can, um, have a vapor barrier that's air and water impermeable. And you get 100% of the R value um, as opposed to the fiberglass batting, which gets like 60 or 70% depending on the quality of the install. And um, yeah, so it's just a good all around system. Also, the other thing too, is this adds a tremendous amount of shear strength to the building. It adds structural strength to the building. Um, with structural, you know, engineering, there's like three different forces. There's compression, tension, and uh, shear. So compression would be like, you know, pushing down on the wall. That'd be like force pushing down. It's compression tension would be pulling it apart and then shear would be moving this way side to side so this building already has plywood on it which gives it a ton of strength but by adding an additional layer of spray foam insulation that even doubles that down so spray foam could be a great option this particular customer chose to go with four inches of closed cell spray foam which gives a full r30 um, you could also do depending on what the code requirements are and what the framing layout is a lot of times people will do um, two inches of spray of closed cell spray foam and that will be a full vapor barrier and then put fiberglass batting on top of that That's known as flash and bat. That's a great system so with that and uh, The fiberglass fiberglass bats on the wall. This is will be a comfortable and efficient building To get some work done in so if you'd like some more information I have a blog post on our website and uh, thanks for stopping by